In this video, I'm going to show you how to do a waterfall release strategy on DistroKid and technically every other distributor. But you might be wondering, what is a waterfall release strategy? So in this video, I'm going to show you what it is. I'm going to show you how to do it on DistroKid, but then explain how you can do it on any other distributor in the world. And I think the easiest way to show you what it is is just to literally show you an artist currently in the middle of a waterfall release strategy. So essentially, all it is, it's, it's, it's actually a lot simpler than what it sounds like, is you're just re-releasing songs as you go and build towards an album or an EP. So for example, this band here, they released this song, It's Supposed to Hurt, and then they followed up with a two song release that had Learn to Forget with It's Supposed to Hurt, and this It's Supposed to Hurt is the exact same between the two. And then they followed that up with a three song release called Being One that also included Learn to Forget from the previous and also included It's Supposed to Hurt from the previous. So it has this effect of building towards something. So we have a one song release, two song release, three song release, four song release, and then currently they're on a six song release, which might be the final EP. I'm not really sure, uh, but they went from four songs to six songs and they called it something else. So you notice that in, in all of these, they just called the release the name of the new single. So it's supposed to hurt, was it that? And then they called this release Learn to Forget and that because Learn to Forget was the new single etc. And then this one they did an EP. But you could use this to build towards an album or an EP or just randomly. You don't actually have to build towards anything. And I'll give you another example of a bigger artist. This is a band I've, I recently found called House Protection. They're really cool if you like like rock metal type stuff. Uh, Spirit Box is a much bigger band. Um, they're like, you know, over a million monthly listeners, I believe. But they've been doing this stuff too. Uh, they did it for their previous album, Eternal Blue. Um, but they were doing it more recently with you know, The Void, and they did Jaded with The Void, and then Cellar Door with Jaded and The Void, and they went up to a six-song EP. Um, so they were kind of building towards something. But sometimes you can kind of use elements of this waterfall release strategy in other means. But what is the actual purpose of this? Like, why would you waste your time re-releasing the songs? And there's a few reasons. The first of which is it allows you to drive people back towards that previous song. So I made a video in the past showing uh, Gail with her song A, B, C, D, E, F, U, which you probably know, it's got multiple billion streams. Um, but if you don't look up Gail, A, B, C, D, E, F, U, she released that song about 15 times. Uh, essentially, she she did like a regular version and then like a clean version and then an extra heavy version and a bunch of featured versions and all these other different versions. And she was releasing with other songs. And so the purpose of that was to continuously drive traffic back towards that song any way possible. So she just kept pairing it with other things so that way when she's promoting the new thing, some of that traffic will go and recheck out that song again because now they're just back to back together in the release. So it makes it super easy for a fan to go and check out that release again. So that's one reason you might want to do it, just to re-expose people back to the previous song. Another example of why it's helpful is let's say you're promoting, uh, you're running ads or any type of marketing campaign on your music. Let's say the second song in your waterfall release strategy is doing really well and the first one did poorly. Well, now it kind of allows you to siphon traffic from the second release to the first release. But on the flip side, let's say track number three is really bad in comparison to track number two. Well, now since track number two is released on an EP with track number three, you can use track number two to drive people to track number two on the three song EP instead of the two song EP. So let me show you what I mean by that. Let's say falling in, or uh, sorry, the, the fear of fear is what they were building up to here, but uh, Spirit Box, let's say Jaded did great and then Cellar Door did horrible. Well, they can promote Jaded on the Cellar Door EP and a lot of the people that check out Jaded here are gonna check out Cellar Door and The Void. So it allows you to cross promote your catalog in a clever way with basically no downside. The only downside is this, this kind of unclean release discography, but Honestly, if you're concerned about how your discography page looks, you're you're wasting your time because only like your most diehard fans are ever going to look at this and you could clean it up later if it really bothers you, but I just don't bother. So that's what it is and that's why it's helpful, but how do you actually do it? And I'm going to show you how to do it on DistroKid. So it's actually a lot simpler than you might be expecting. So here we are in DistroKid and first I'm going to show you with two tracks that I have already done this with before. So I'm specifically going to show you again and again and never... If I go in again and again, this is just a one song single. So very simple, right? Just distribute your single as if you would. But then if I go back and look at Never, click on that, 
you'll see it's again just never paired with again and again. So the two songs are tied together. Now, the biggest part of how you make this happen, because what you don't want to have happen is you don't want to have again and again be considered a new release. You want Spotify and all the other platforms to realize that it's the same again and again that you just put out a month before or, or a year ago or whenever it was. And so there's a few ways you have to do that. The first thing you need to understand is that every track has its own uh, ISRC code. So over here, these are the ISRC codes for these specific songs. And every release has its own UPC code. The UPC code is the universal product code or whatever, but basically it's it's the code for the release as a whole. So an, a, every single has a UPC code and an ISRC, but every EP has a UPC and multiple ISRC. So every song is an ISRC, every release has a UPC. Even if it's just one song, it'll have a UPC and an ISRC code. So each song, each ISRC code can be a part of multiple UPC codes. So essentially the biggest part of this is when you go to release the re-release a song on a different record, you want to reuse everything about the previous song. So the way I typically do it, let's say I wanted to do a three song waterfall with these two songs. To do it, I would, I'm gonna duplicate this tab here so I have a second DistroKid tab open. And I'm gonna go and click Upload Music. And you know, you go through this the way you would do it. Do Andrew Southworth, just because this is what it is turn on the Snapchat distribution because I own all my publishing. And now this is gonna be a three song waterfall, right? So I'm gonna choose three songs. This album has not been previously released. The, some of the songs have, but the album has not. So we're gonna choose no. Artist band release, you're gonna sync all your profiles here just like you would in DistroKid. If you're brand new to doing this, um, basically it'll ask you to choose what profile on Spotify and Apple and YouTube and Instagram and Facebook are the correct ones. So we can set our release date whenever that's gonna be choose our release time. I usually do the default for release time and time synchronization. I often do not do pre-orders, but you can if you want. We choose our record label, type in whatever you want. Now album price, uh, this is, you know, it's not an album, it's, a, it's an EP. I usually just do whatever the closest is to, to whatever the number of songs times 99 cents is. <laughs> um, language, English, genre, choose whatever your genre is. This case, it's kind of like a uh, I'm just going to call it like pop mixed with rock, but that's not the purpose of this video. Upload your album cart, album artwork, and then we get to album title. And this is when we start actually having different things happen. So for album title, I'm just going to call this release three, just to make it clear. <laughs> um, but we have our album title. So in this track one, I'm imagining is also called release three. So track one, I'm going to call release three. You would set up all of this data like you normally would for any release. You know, make sure it's accurate. If you have featured artists, if you have radio edits, do all that stuff. Upload your audio file as is. Do all this stuff as is. Then we get to track two. And this is where things get unique. For the most part, you're gonna do things exactly the same, but you need to be extra careful you reuse everything. So track two in this case is gonna be never. So I'm gonna go here and copy and paste the song title. And, you know, fill this in as is to make it match the original. But when we get to the audio file upload, there's this already have an ISRC code section. And we do already have an ISRC. So I'm going to go back to never. I'm going to copy the ISRC from that and paste it in. And now when I do select an audio file, I need to make sure I grab the original audio file, ideally. Uh, technically, sometimes you can have a new audio file. It's really supposed to be the exact same audio file. If you go in and drastically change your file, it's a good chance the platforms will not sync it up. It really is supposed to be the exact same. Sometimes you get away with it not being the same though. <laughs> so do with that what you will. But the, the way to make sure you grabbed your exact same audio file, you know, if you're like me, you probably have a million versions of all your songs in your on your hard drive. Um, you can go up and district it up here to protect your music and then to the vault. And inside of the vault, every release you've ever uploaded to DistroKid. So I just clicked on the release for never, and then I have the two songs. And I can go and I can download the exact file that I uploaded. So that way you ensure that it's exactly the same. So you can download those and now you have both. So then you just go here, select an audio file, upload that exact file, fill in the rest of this information exactly how it should be. I don't always mess with the preview clip start times and like this data um, usually carries over from previously, but ideally set it. I'm just lazy. <laughs> uh, 
Um, track three, again, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go again and again. And basically I'm just doing this again the same way I did before. I already have an ISRC code, yes. Ideally you would have also downloaded that other file from the vault. We need to upload that here, fill in the rest of the information the same. So you can see in general, the way this works is whatever new song you're doing, in this case, it's release three, that's generally gonna be the name of the album or the release. And the audio file and ISRC codes are new here, so you don't need to paste in an ISRC. But then for the existing songs, you're reusing the song name, the audio file, and the ISRC code. So again, to summarize, if you want that track to be a carryover and link to the previous one, because if I go to Spotify for Artists here, and I go to, sure, here, I'm gonna go to this profile. If I go to, again and again here, it has 2422. If I go here, 2422. So they are linked. If you want to make sure that they're linked, you need to have the same song name, the same ISRC code, and typically the same audio file. Again, I have seen people like fix the audio file a little bit and get away with it and it links. But as far as I know, it's supposed to be exactly the same. And it's, you're just getting lucky if you get through it. But I, let me know in the comments if you have a different experience with that. But that's it. Now this works exactly the same on any distributor. The reason why I chose DistroKid to show you this is because most artists use DistroKid. So <laughs> most people are searching about doing DistroKid. But it works exactly the same on CD Baby, Amuse, TuneCore, Ditto, Melodist, whatever it is. And uh, if you want to sign up for DistroKid, if you like, if you, if you think DistroKid makes sense for you, I do have a discount code below, and I also have a discount code for Melodist as well. Um, but if you want to see how you can actually promote your music now that you know how to do this waterfall release strategy, check out this video where I show you how to run ads to promote your music from start to finish and ads specifically promoting it on streaming platforms. And if you want to see whatever YouTube thinks you should watch, check out this video right here. And also let me know if that video is actually interesting to you because YouTube decides whatever is it going to be. So anyways, thanks for watching. Hope you found this helpful and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.